Hi there. This video is all about trigonometry and how to calculate an angle within a right angle triangle. This is important in National 5 physics if you want to answer vector addition questions mathematically. Let's take a look at a right angle triangle then. So if we want to calculate this angle within the triangle, then we call this side the opposite side because if we look at it, it's directly opposite the angle. Now the longest side, that's what we call the hypotenuse, and the final side is called the adjacent. To work out the angles then, the sine of the angle is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So that means that the angle theta is equal to the sine to the minus one opposite divided by hypotenuse. The second function is the cosine function. So the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. That means that we can calculate the angle from this equation. Theta is equal to cos to the minus one adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Finally, the tangent of an angle is calculated by dividing the opposite side by the adjacent, meaning the angle theta is equal to tan to the minus one opposite divided by adjacent. The mnemonic Soka Toa can be used to help you remember the three functions. So that gives us the sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and the tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. Let's work through four examples, and hopefully by the end of this, you will have a better idea of how to do it. Here's the first one. So the question says, and it's exactly the same question with all four, calculate angle theta in the triangle shown. First of all, we've got this side here. Hopefully you can see that that is opposite the angle. So that's the opposite side. And this is the adjacent. Remember that the longest side, and we don't know that here, this is the hypotenuse. So as I said, this is the opposite and this is the adjacent. Now what links the opposite and the adjacent is of course the tan function. So I could say that tan of the angle. Now in maths, a lot of the time the angle is written as an X. In physics, a lot of the time it's written as this letter here, theta or theta, however you want to say it. So tan theta is equal to be opposite divided by adjacent would be 15 divided by 24. So that means therefore theta is equal to tan to the minus one, 15 over 24. And if we work that out with a trusty calculator, we press shift and tan 15 divided by 24, close a bracket. That gives us this 32.00538321.5. Now, because both of these sides are written to two significant figures, I'm going to write that angle to two significant figures. So I would say, 32 degrees. There we have it. There's the first example. Now in subsequent videos, I'll be going over how to maybe change that angle and express it as a bearing. I'm not going to do that just now. I just want to see that you understand the sine, cosine and tangent function. Move that up and I'm again going to get on to the second example, which looks a little bit like this. <clears throat> so it says calculate angle theta in the triangle shown and we have this side, which again, this is opposite the angle. That's obviously the opposite side. This is the longest side, which is the hypotenuse. I'll give you a second just to think which function that is. Hopefully you know that it's the sine function. So sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of the angle would be opposite, which is 40, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 48. And that means, therefore, the angle would be sine to the minus 1, 40 over 48 is equal to, and again, we'll use the calculator, press shift, then the sine button gives us sine to the minus 1, 40 divided by 48, close the bracket, and that gives us this. Now again, I'm going to write that to two significant figures. The number after the six there is less than five. If this was a five, 
or greater, I would round this up to 57. It's not though. So I'm just going to write 56 degrees. Third example looks like so. And again, move that up. Now, our two sides are this one here. Obviously, that's the longest side. That's the hypotenuse. And hopefully you can see that that side is the adjacent side. So that would mean what links the adjacent side to the hypotenuse is the cosine function. So cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 84 over 95. So that of course means that theta is equal to cos to the minus one, 84 over 95 is, press shift and a cosine button, 84 divided by 95, close bracket is equal to, now, Again, two significant figures. The number after the seven, so I've got 27, but the number after that seven is bigger than five. Or remember if it's five or larger, I then would round up this number here. So I'm going to round that to 28 degrees. One thing I've not mentioned yet, and as I said, I'll go over this at some other point, is expressing angles as bearings. And normally when we're expressing, well, always when we're expressing them as bearings, we round to the nearest degree. But as I said, that's something I'll cover in another video. So this is our final example. Now, first thing I'll do is I'll clear that calculator. And if I show you the two sides, we have, first of all, this is the opposite side because it's opposite the angle. Second side is the adjacent. The one side that we don't know, again, is the hypotenuse, the longest one. So this is going to be, again, the tan function. And I know that tan theta is opposite divided by adjacent, so that's 90 divided by 50. Now, one thing I've not mentioned is that this method, how we're actually calculating the angle, is only one method that you can use. If you want to, when you're adding vectors, you can actually do it mathematically like this, or you can draw what's known as a scale diagram. If you search on YouTube, Mr. Smith, Vector Edition, you'll find a video all about this. And we can use this method if we're adding, like in this question, we're adding two velocities, or if we're adding two forces, or if we're adding two displacements. All of these, velocity, force, and displacement, they're all vectors. Now, there is one thing that I'll say at the end as well, which is how to set up the calculator, make sure it's in the correct mode. But as I said, I'll talk about that later. Now we've got the tan function and the tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And again, to work at that angle, it would be theta is equal to tan to the minus one, 90 over 50. And that will give us shift tan 90 divided by 50 is equal to 60.9. So if I was writing that to two significant figures, again, the number after the zero here is a nine. So if it's five or greater, then you'd be rounding up. So I'd be rounding that to 61 degrees. Now, the thing I said I was going to mention is, it's very, very important that these, well, what's showing here is a small letter D, just to show that we're measuring in degrees. Sometimes, and this is more in higher uh, maths, in fact, and advanced higher physics, we can measure angles in, not in degrees, but in radians. So, of course, that would mean that in order to work with radians, pupils would need to change the calculator to a different mode. Only thing is, sometimes, of course, they'd be using radians in maths or in advanced higher physics. And then they have a physics lesson where degrees should be used and they forget to change from radians to degrees. So just make sure that it is displaying here degrees and make sure you also know how to change your calculator from one mode to another. In this calculator, I just had to press shift and then this button here, which gave me setup. Pressing three would give me degrees. Pressing four would give me radians. Pressing five would give me gradients. And there we have it. So hopefully this has made sense. And that's all for now.